Hello and welcome. This is my CST beginner guide. And in today's video, we'll be uh, expanding upon the quarter wavelength impedance transformer. In the previous videos, uh, we explored how to uh, impedance match in the schematic tool. And now in this video, I'm gonna take you through the approach to achieving the quarter wavelength impedance match inside the 3D environment. So we're gonna take the values which we've tuned in the following test. So here we can see we have a very good match at three gigahertz. And this is achieved with a 0.22982 millimeters wide width at a length of 9.94. Okay, so we're gonna take these values which we calculated in the schematic tool and then implement it into 3D. Okay, so let's do that now. I'm going to first delete one of the ports, so port two. I'm going to now delete, and yes, I would like to delete them. Okay, head back over to our 3D tool. Click on components. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the transmission line first. So the easiest way to create a transmission line that extends upon, for example, a 50 ohm line or another uh, line, or if, or if you have a, uh, some sort of other sort of shape or geometry and you want to continue on from that shape, you need it to be dynamic. It needs to be able to, if this line, for example, got smaller, it needs to be able to shift alongside um, uh, the movement. So how do we do that? If we zoom in right to this edge here, we can click on modeling and pick a point. I'm going to select the solid microstrip line and I'm gonna select the bottom one of it, not the top one, the bottom one, and we have a point. I'm gonna click this button over here in our modeling tab called Align WCS. Now it creates a new reference plane to work from. I'm going to then create a curve, a line from this point I'll zoom out a bit, all the way out here. And I know it's going to start at zero, and it's going to extend all the way out of a quarter wavelength, which I've previously calculated. So I can just take the variable because it's already been set via the tuner. So I can go close tuner, and I'm going to click OK. And here's our curve line. Now I'm going to expand that line into a transmission line. I'm going to click on, I'll go back to those steps, this little icon here, which is the trace from curve. I'm going to click on the line we just created and click enter. Here we have create trace from curve. I'm going to call this a quarter wavelength TX. And the thickness is going to be the PEC thickness that we previously set. And the width is going to be the width of 75. It's also going to be in PEC. And I'm going to click OK. So here we have our quarter wavelength transition. Now, the next step is to extend the ground plane and also extend the substrate up to this point. But we need it to be in reference to this point. The easiest way to do that is first select the face of the substrate using S on the keyboard. Select the face. Now we're going to select a point on here by using pick points. And now we've got a selected point. So we have a point at the end of it and we have a face selected. Now if we click the extrude button, you'll find that it automatically extrudes to that point. So it's perfect. Now I want it to be in magnesium oxide, which is the material I created with a relative permittivity of 9.7. And I'm gonna call this sub extension for substrate extension. I'm going to click okay. And I'm gonna do the exact same for the ground plane. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm going to zoom into the ground plane, click S, click on the face, select a point now out here using pick points, and I'm going to click extrude, and perfect, I'm going to change the material to PEC, and I'm going to name it GPEXT. I'm going to click OK. Now I can leave it as is, but just to smoothen the lines out, I'm going to connect the ground plane and the substrate. So let's do the ground plane first. I'm gonna click on my original ground plane and I'm gonna click control. 
and ground plane ext and click the boolean plus i'm going to do the same with substrate and substrate ext the boolean plus perfect okay let's go back over here let's check everything's okay our ground plane still intact so here we have a very long 50 ohm transmission line and then we have a quarter wavelength transformer designed around 3 gigahertz. So what we're going to do, we have two options now. We can either place a load between this point here and ground or we can create a port and then add a load in the schematic tool. Let's go with the second option. I'm going to zoom all the way in and click S on this face. I'm going to then go home, macros, Solver, Ports, Calculate Port Extension Coefficient. Except it's not going to work. Okay, bugger, let's go close. And let's actually just reflect the same port over to the other side. So to do this, we're going to go Modeling. We are going to select, uh, deselect the local coordinate system. And we're going to select here um under pick point pick center of a face let's pick the center of the substrate that we joined together we're going to align a local coordinate system and we're going to go all the way down to our port one we're going to click transform rotate um, and we see that the rotation's not around the point we want we actually want it to be uh, not shape center maybe around zero and we can preview Perfect. And we can turn it all the way around. And we are going to zoom in on the port to check everything is correct. Yep, that's where I want it. And I'm going to click the copy button and click OK. So now we have a second port. Perfect. OK. In this case, I'm going to now set up the simulation environment. I'm going to not normalize to 50 ohms, um, and we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to start it, then pause the video. Okay, the simulation's complete. Now, I'm not going to worry about checking the S parameters now. I'm just going to move in to my schematic tool, and here's my old quarter wavelength transmission line. Well, I actually don't need this anymore, so I'm just going to click delete and I'm going to connect these lines and I'm going to click the update button. I'm going to head over to my navigation tree and click S parameters and perfect. We see that the 3D structure I previously made is slightly off on frequency, but it's achieved a very good match at below negative 20 around three gigahertz. Always look at the Smith chart because it's easier to interpret the data. We can see that, okay, it's been matched. It can be matched a little better. We can get this line here to be forced over the normalized impedance of one if we want a better match. And we can then fine tune that if we wanted to. Uh, the easiest way would be to then fine tune it in the 3D simulation. And it will probably be a bit more simple to have the load in the 3D simulation then. But overall, this is how we create a quarter wavelength impedance transformer within CST. Thank you.